Hi, this is Bill Spatrino. Today is February 26th, 2019. Uh, it appears to me that this uh, Jesse Smollett, like we had talked about, it was it's it's looking more and more like a hoax. I mean, I don't want to come out and say it is, but it's looking more and more like that. Uh, unlike the media who likes to report on things they don't know about. It appears that way. I mean, the two guys they had in custody, they let them go. And they don't let them go unless they're innocent. They probably showed them everything that happened. My take, and it was my take from the word go. I mean, the whole thing just didn't make sense. Okay, you're not going to go rob somebody at 2 o'clock in the morning that's holding a Subway sandwich and not even knock the sub sandwich out of your hands. Believe me, if I was going to rob you, I'm going to knock that sandwich out of your hands just for fun. Okay. It's it just, it's not real. Okay. I want these people to apologize. Okay. 15 celebrities blame Trump. Uh, well, I don't know if these are people are celebrities in name only. Uh, the, the Empire co-creator said we have to love each other regardless of what sexual orientation we are because it shows we're on a united front and no racist F can come in, the F word, and come in and do the things they did. Hold your head up. Okay, I'll be with you. It's just another F in day in America. I hope he apologizes. Okay. Um, the singer share word racism, homophobia, promoted by the most infamous clown in the world, is the poison that kills America. Uh, we'll see if she apologizes. What do you think? I don't think so. Uh, Katy Perry, that that uh, brain surgeon, I mean singer, um, standing with and sending love. This is a racist hate crime and is disgusting and shameful to our country. I hope that she does chastise the hate crime and chastises the gay African American who put it towards the Trump person. Olivia Munn claimed Jesse Smollett was violently attacked by two men, two white men who poured bleach on him and put a noose around his neck. Now, I saw videos of those guys. They didn't look white to me. He was targeted for being black and for being gay. Um, actor Billy Eichner, I don't even know who he is, he cast the blame on, he must be so famous, he cut the blame on Trump and all the MAGA lunatics. Um, heartbroken and furious reading. I want Trump and all the MAGA lunatics to burn in hell. Well, since the MAGA lunatics didn't do it, someone on the left did, someone who's gay did, and someone that's African American does, is that who he wants to, to, I mean, should we be saying that? I don't think that. But apparently he does. Um, in a now deleted tweet, because she's so, can't stay, doesn't want to be accountable for it. Rosie O'Donnell cast blame on the MAGA a-holes. Um, Rob Reiner, meathead, the real meathead, came in with his usual vitriol. The horrible attack on Jussie has no place in a decent, human-loving society. Homophobia existed before Trump, but there is no question that since he's injected his hatred, we are less decent, less human, and less loving. Hmm. No intolerance, no DT. Um, Trump didn't do this. Are you going to apologize? Are you going to call Trump up and apologize? Um, Barry Jenkins, who's a Hollywood director, said, this is effed, and this is what all the hateful mongering has wrought. Hmm. It's it's fought, it's what it's wrought is people on the left are waiting for crimes they don't get them, so they have to make them up. Hmm. Beth Beers, an an actress, um, again I don't even know who the heck she is. Um, for the love of God, how can people still be supporting this president? Is she talking about Obama? Oh no, she's talking about Trump. I mean. This is just, and, and, and Molly Ringwald, okay, uh, Cory Booker, you know, Janelle Monet. I, I don't even know who these people are, okay. George Takai, the one from uh, 
Star Wars. You know, he's talking about how this is all negative. All the homophobes that have done this. Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez AOC. It was not possibly homophobic. It was racist and homophobic. Um, the person who did it is apparently a racist. And he's a homophobic. He doesn't like straight people, apparently. I don't, I don't know. Um, they're just acting like this was an isolated interest, I incident. It isn't. Okay. There was a thing, and since Trump was elected in November of 2016, an 18-year-old Muslim claimed that in 2016, two white men, one who was wearing a Trump hat, attacked and robbed her. She later admitted to the police department in Louisiana she made the whole thing up. A Philadelphia woman in November of 16 claimed in 2016 she was harassed at a gas station by white Trump-supporting males, one who pulled a weapon on her. Okay. That didn't happen either. The church organist in 2017 spray-painted a swastika on an anti-gay slur and the words, Hail Trump, on his own church. When the story first broke, of course, they tied it to the Trump election. I mean, this is just, and I mean, I can keep reading them. Okay. Student writes anti-Muslim graffiti on his own door at Beloit College. Folks, do you know who, do you know who the hate crimes in this country? And I'm going to give you the actual statistics. Okay. I can keep going and giving them. I got a whole list of them here to read. I'm getting tired of reading them. Okay, they just made people made things up. Okay, the Covington thing that happened in January, the thing that happened at Walmart in December. They thought that somebody shot a person. Okay, they got it wrong. It was somebody African American. I mean, it's just getting out of control. Okay, you and I went and did statistics. Do you know who the most hate crimes are done against? Do you know which do you know which nationality has the most hate crimes against them? You're not gonna know. It ain't African Americans. I can tell you that right now. They're not even number two. Number one, by far, Jewish people. Number two, Muslims. Okay. So when you're talking about hate crimes, and if you want to blame the Jewish people being attacked on Trump. Trump's grandchildren are Jewish. His daughter is Jewish. Okay. So I don't think I I'm just tired of this, okay? I I don't want to say I don't want this guy to go to jail. I want him to go to jail because I want to set an example for people that don't I'm I'm upset if the guy would have just said in the beginning, "Look, this got out of hand." You know, I'm an insecure man. I am don't feel good about myself. My latent inadequacies are causing me to do this. Donald Trump's a real man and I'm not. Or something to that nature. This guy went on Good Morning America last week and just doubled down. It basically just kept repeating the story. I mean, this is something, again, I feel like this pe the people on the left there are like a group of fifth or sixth graders between AOC and these people. And then there's a connection between Kamala Harris and Cory Booker. Within two hours of this attack, they have this anti-lynching bill in the Senate that they're trying to promote. And came out right out and said this was a lynching. Okay. I'm going to give some advice to people, okay, on the left. And I suspect, I suggest everybody take this advice. Before you say something. Think about what you're saying. Use your brain. There's a thing, saying that I, I think we learned it in the second grade. Talk, think, then talk. Okay. It don't, if you don't have something nice to say, if you, if it's true, even if someone did do this, to try to blame Trump for this, 
is really nonsensical. It is completely any more than if some African American attacks a, a a Trump person. Are we supposed to say that that Obama caused it? You mean I don't remember ever saying something like that. Okay, this negativity against police, against anybody that's conservative or anybody that represents power, like Catholics, again, people don't really like Catholics, okay? I mean, look at how they went after the Jews and the Muslims, okay? That's where the real hate crimes lie. And as far as statistics about committing crimes, hate crimes, okay, everyone wants to say that white people are committing hate crimes. Again, that's false. 50% of the, of the hate crimes are done by white people. Okay. However, white people are 60 or 70 percent of the population. So it is an, un, they're under committing the crimes. African Americans commit, I believe, 25 percent of them. They are not 25 percent of the population. Okay. Now, someone will say to me, Billy, that sounds racist. There's nothing racist I'm saying. I'm saying statistics. Yes, you could say 50 percent of the white people are doing it. Just like they're saying people are getting smaller refunds. Yes, your refunds are smaller because you were getting more money during your check during the year. Okay. The tax rates for 90, for, I I don't understand how a person under $75,000, I don't, I don't see how it's possible. If you could show me how you make $75,000 and your tax is more, under this plan, I will personally give you, I will admit I'm wrong on this telecast, and I will say your name, and I'll say that you're right and I'm wrong, okay? So that's a challenge for anybody. Um, As far as the investing goes, and I want to mention too, Bernie had come out for president, and people want to know what I think of Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is probably the most honest person, Trump included, that has run for president. Okay, He's very honest. He's a socialist. He comes right out and tells you that he's a socialist. Now, I don't know how the Democratic Party is going to let him run for president under their umbrella. I don't think he's... They, I, they have a rule, but in New Hampshire, they're not paying any attention to it. So I don't know how that's all going to work. Um, he just reminds me of the aardvark on the Pink Panther show. I mean, he just, he says a lot of, he says a lot of nothing. You know, if you tell people, okay, you're going to get everything for free. You're great. You're wonderful. You're going to get a percentage of the people that believe that. Okay. Even though it's not so, or it's not feasible. Okay. It's not what Bernie Sanders is saying. Someone said to me, Billy, what's wrong with a $15 minimum wage? Honestly, it depends where you live. I mean, in, in New York City, maybe $15 is the, the, the town can support it. We can't support it here in Cleveland, Ohio. But then what about people that are making sixteen or 17000 that have been at their jobs for 10 or 15 years? What are you supposed to do with them? You're supposed to give them, everybody's supposed to just get a raise? Who pays for that? Invariably, someone else has to pay. And you can tax the millionaires and billionaires all you want, okay? That, if you took 100% of their money, you're still not going to solve all the problems. You're not going to pay the debt off or the deficit. And what you're going to do is you're going to get a bunch of people that won't work, okay? I just want everybody to understand that. As far as the investing goes, I've got another stock for you. It's called Newell, N-W-L. Carl Icahn is a part owner of it. Stock has dropped. Look, it's it owns a bunch of companies. It's I believe a trade deal is coming. Okay, they have a couple. We have two more days before the trade deal comes and gets announced. I I think there's going to be an extension. I also think that Trump and China will make a deal. There'll be an extension though. But Trump, look, whatever he gets out of the deal is more than you were getting. Okay. I want to talk, too, about 
there's there's a great article. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but it's it's written by a guy named Rabbi Dove Fisher. Um, but he put it on his thing. Ronald Yates, I guess, wrote it. It says everyone is smart except for Donald Trump, and it's when you first read this, you think. Um, You know, it's really simple. Everyone's smart except for Donald Trump. That's why they're all billionaires and they all got elected president. Only Trump doesn't know what he's doing. Only Trump doesn't know how to negotiate with Vladimir Putin. Anderson Cooper knows how to stand up to Putin. The whole crowd at MSNBC does. All the journalists do. They could not stand up to Matt Lauer. They could not stand up to Charlie Rose or Jan Wenner at Rolling Stone. But can they stand up to Putin? Only Trump is incapable of negotiating. Remember four years ago when Anderson Cooper was president? And before that, when the entire Washington Post editorial staff were elected to be president? Do you remember? Neither do I. It, basically, this article, if you read it, explains that Trump voters get him. Not because he is we, but we are he. Okay. We were not snowflaked for life by effeminate professors who themselves have never negotiated tough life or death serious deals. Instead, we live in a real world, and we know the, how that works. Not based on social science theories, not based on conceptual negotiating models, but based on people we've met over life and always will hate. That worst boss we ever had, the co-worker who tried to sabotage us. We know the sons of buns, sons of bums who we survived. We won't have John Kerry sue this by having James Taylor sing You've Got a Friend, Carols. The Bush first got us into all these messes. The first one killed the economic miracle Reagan had fashioned. The second one screwed up the Middle East, where Iraq and Iran were beautifully engaged in killing each other, and got us mired in the middle of another one. Clinton, at least, was too busy with Monica Lewinsky to protect us from Osama bin Laden. Hillary gave us Benghazi and more. And Obama and Kerry gave us the Iran deal, ISIS, and American retreat, all to the daily praise of a media who now attack Trump every minute of every day. You know, and he talks about NATO, how they rip us off, how we saved them in World War I, 116,000 Americans died. Then they messed up for the next two years because Western Europeans are so effeminate and it's, uh, obsessed with their class manners that they didn't have the character to stand up to Hitler. So another 405,000 died. Then we had to rebuild them. Okay. We love NATO, but they rip us off. We pay 4% of our big GDP to protect them, and they don't even pay 2% of theirs. Okay, long before Trump, they set up tariffs against us. Okay, you you just got to read the rest of the article. It, it it basically the way it closed is what he, he he says in here. What we've basically told NATO is it's like a parent telling a thirty five year old kid, "We've been supporting you for thirty five years. We put you through college by signing four years on hundred thousand dollars of loans. You graduated college fifteen years ago." I've been asking you nicely to look for a job and start communicating. Said you stay home all day playing video games, texting your friends on a smartphone I pay for, and picking little fuzzballs out of your navel. So I love you. You're my flesh and blood. But if you're not employed and earning a paycheck, in six months we're throwing you out of the house. And that boy is NATO. Trump is dad. And we've all been signing for the loans. Okay, and he talks about negotiating with Putin. Read the article. It's a good one. It, it says, in the end, I'll just sum it up. In the end, Trump's over 70. He's made a lot of mistakes. But he spent 70 years learning. He's seen some of his business go bankrupt, and he's learned from those experiences to be a billionaire and not let it happen again. He's a tough and smart negotiator. He sizes up his opponent and knows the approach that works best for one is not one for another. It doesn't work for the other. Okay, in his first 18 months, this man has turned around the American economy brought his full, near full employment, reduced the welfare and food stamp lines, wiped out ISIS in Raqqa, moved America's Israel embassy to Jerusalem, successfully launched massive deregulation of the economy, has opened 
oil exploration in the Anwar is rebuilding the military, has walked out of the useless Paris Climate Accords that was negotiated by America's amateurs who always get snookered, can the disastrous Iran deal, exited the bogus United Nations Human Rights Council. He convinced Canada and Mexico that he would walk out of NAFCA if they didn't negotiate a new and fair agreement. They did. And has the Europeans convinced he'll walk out of NATO if they don't stop the cheap, lazy, parasitic penny pinchers they are. He slashed taxes, expanded legal protections for college students, falsely accused of crimes. He's taken real steps to protect religious freedoms and liberties promised in the First Amendment and has taken over this Lyme disease quality of legislative mess that he inherited from Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama on immigration and has appointed a steadily line of remarkably brilliant conservative judges to sit on the district courts, the circuit of port, appellates, and the Supreme Court. What has Anderson Cooper achieved during that period? Jim McCost or the editorial staffs of them of the New York Times. They haven't even found the courage and strength to stand up to the co-workers and celebrities within their orbits who abuse sexually or fight psychologically or emotionally. They have no accomplishments to compare to his. Just their effeminate opinions all echoing each other, all echoing, echoing, echoing. They gave us eight years of Nobel Peace Prize Obama negotiating with ISIS's JV, calming the rise of the oceans and healing the planet. We will take Trump negotiating every day. And also, I want to add one more thing. He's trying to get at a hate crime all around the world for the LGBT. He's trying to represent the LGBTs. Everybody says, oh, he shouldn't do it. But he but he is, okay? And he's trying to get this in a lot of these countries that are our friends. You're, you're not allowed, if you're gay, you can get thrown off a building. That's ridiculous, okay? We got to get that changed. And we're going to get it changed. Um, The last thing we're going to talk about with sports is Martina Navratilova was trying to explain that she doesn't want transgender athletes playing as females because a, a boxer almost got killed the other day. A female boxer who was really a male fought somebody and almost gave him brain damage. And Navratilova said, and, and she's, and this is the thing, they've attacked her. And the, I mean, she has been the greatest voice for the LGBT cause of any athlete. I mean, I'm, I really, of all the tennis players I've ever watched play, Martina Navratilova, I, it, she used to play for the old Cleveland Nets and I used to see her at the Coliseum. And, and I mean, she was just a great athlete and she represented tennis the way it's supposed to be represented. And for the LGBT community to come out against her just doesn't make any sense to me. So please click the subscribe button. Tell your friends, family, co-workers, everybody about the truth machine. So from behind the wheel of the truth machine, this is Bill Spetrino asking you to sit back and enjoy the ride.